So, okay, so we're off and running. Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan. Welcome to GW Coders. It's the first semester, first day of the spring semester of 2023 for us. Um, so I'll start out with just a few announcements and then um, we'll get into today's content. I wanted to mention that we have a few things coming up at the GW libraries um, through the Academic Commons. Um, maybe the easiest thing to do is I'll just share my screen so people can see the same thing that I'm seeing. Um, and then you can take notes if there are things that you're interested in. Um, so for example, they have introduction to Python courses coming up on the 25th, um, both general programming, it looks like, and then in the afternoon, specific to data analysis. Um, they're also going to do some on creative content with Adobe products. Um, the university has an agreement with Adobe, and we have trained Adobe people that work in the Creative Commons, and they were telling us last year that they're going to try to offer more workshops this year on different ways to use the Adobe suite of products. Um, they're going to have a GIS one coming up at the end of January, then some HTML and CSS, um, and then Adobe Illustrator coming up, um, and oh, Tableau, I might actually go to the Tableau one. Um, <laughs> no, did you hear about that? Sorry, I completely interrupt that. But oh no, you're welcome. They're getting cut. Like their budget's getting cut. All their staff is. Oh really? Acquired. They got acquired by Salesforce, I think, or what? Like uh, the company, and then the layoffs yeah. happened, and they're like Tableau was like on the chopping block. So there's been a lot. Really? Around Twitter That's too that bad. Future support for it might be in uh, limbo. So yeah, that's tool. good. So now we're now for workshops on it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a university place. to like mm -hmm. teach cobalt. <laughs> yeah, um, anyway. So then they have a Zotero workshop coming up, um, which uh -huh. is very useful tool. If you don't use Zotero, it's very helpful it. for many, many things. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah. Then they have Photoshop. Let's see, and that takes us into mid-February, and by then we'll have met again. So those are the, some of the things that are coming up. Um, does anyone else know of other events or happenings that people might be interested in? I don't know, the EMSC workshop, I'm, I, I fill out your survey. I mentioned one of them could be about like chatbots. Yeah. If we can get someone like maybe Ryan yeah. to come present. Because we're, we're doing our departmental Seminar series, but oh, okay. Not sure yet. It's going to be a mix of like students presenting their work or outside speakers or what. But I thought, especially since we have the whole like trustworthy AI like group, true. someone true. <laughs> should talk about this yeah. in more detail about like it's like I went to the one I attended. I zoomed in for the one you guys did on Wednesday. Yep, which was higher level, you know, about like because the, the audience was super broad, so a lot of people didn't even know what it could do yet. I think in engineering we need to be talking. Like, what are we going to do about this and how, you know? Um, are, am I able to attend these? Like, I don't know. That's <laughs> no. I said, I, you just asked, is there anything else going on? And I'm like, maybe, like, it could, I think it could be. Like, it can go on. So can I find the schedule for that? Uh, it has not been set yet. We're in the process. Yeah. Uh, um, you, uh, so he, he, he's the he department or? Uh, engineering management and systems engineering. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what John referring to, too, on Tuesday or Wednesday, Lorena Barba from mm -hmm. Mechanical mm -hmm. Aerospace um, and I and a colleague from history did a session mostly for faculty on chat GPT and how to think about it in terms of using it in your classes and so forth. Um, the video for that was supposed to be put up this morning on their Vimeo. Um, so. I can post the link. I'll post it into, we have a Slack group that we use for communicating. Um, so I'll post it into there for anyone who's interested. Um, and they're also planning CCAS, the undergrad um, arts and sciences college is also planning an April symposium on the ethics and philosophical issues of primarily large language models and 
generally labeled AI, but mm -hmm. it's just one aspect of AI. Um, but the video that we have from Wednesday, I thought Lorena did a good job talking about different mm -hmm. types of AI labeled systems oh. and how to kind of think about chat GPT and large language models within the context of a range of technologies, yeah. not just one technology, but it's just one use of the technology. So I thought she did a good job with that. Went a little longer than I thought she would. I said three minutes and she did 20. Um, <laughs> but I thought it was useful, so we let her go. Um, it was a good framing. So I mean, it was sort of a, at a higher level, a good framing for any audience to understand what these things are, what we mean when we say AI and all this. But now I'm, I want to get more specific about, um, especially in a STEM education, like what should you be doing about it and how should you be preparing, thinking about it and no one's talking about it. So <laughs> probably make a forum or something. Yeah. About it. It seems rather I'm sure Lorena can talk for a, a long time about it for you too. So <laughs> it's an important topic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um trying to think if there are any other announcements. Um, I did post to the Slack group. I'm not sure if anyone here is interested. So with a colleague at Mason who does recommender systems and a colleague at Washington, Western Washington University, and then Parav, a GW Coder student, and maybe some others, we're going to try to build a recommender system this spring um, and deploy it So and see how that goes. Looking um, both at the technical pieces, obviously, how do we code it? How do we make it work? But also trying to think about different types of bias that may or may not get into our recommendations. Specifically, we're going to be recommending scientific research articles from different domains. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just beginning that. So if anyone in coders is interested, we obviously have to have people on UI, people on the actual algorithm for the recommendations. There's many aspects to the project. We have uh, pretty good web development skills for Django and stuff, yeah. but if anyone's interested, um, drop me a note and we can get you involved with that group if you want a practical project. Um, so it gets more complicated the more I think about it, um, but it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm also doing an AI policy, um, course that I'm taking as a student. Um, and so I'm thinking about how do you take legal frameworks that they're proposing for AI and actually implement it into a deployable system? And what are the challenges in that? Because it's one thing to talk about things being transparent and things being fair and unbiased. And it's another thing then to actually develop a system that is unbiased yeah. and actually does good predictions. <laughs> Those aren't always aligned well. Um, so it's interesting to kind of see how we can translate those legal frameworks into a system that will hopefully actually do something and do it well. Um, that's our goal. So, I think those are all the announcements. Um, so today's session, we're going to be talking about um, Google Script, which is a slightly verified version of JavaScript, but 99.9% .9 the same, just a few little differences here and there. Um, and so I'll turn it over to Leah, who's going to share her screen and talk about a project she did using it. And then if there's time, I'll talk about some projects I've done, or I'll talk another um, another, another time, time about I've done I've done probably, probably ten different, 10 different, different projects, projects now with it. So so plenty I, plenty I could talk about. Oh. All right. Uh, okay. Can you mute on your end? Yeah. Perfect. Also the audio. Well, uh, mm -hmm. hi everyone. We've got some feedback. We'll get it. There we go. You should be good now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so today I am going to talk about a very small project that I did using Google Apps Script. Um, oh, okay. 
And uh, so Google Apps Script is uh, something that I learned about through GW Coders. Uh, and that's kind of what inspired me to do this small project. And uh, it's a way to, to write code uh, within a bunch of the different kind of Google suite things like uh, Google Calendar, Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets. And uh, that way you can kind of automate a lot of different tasks. So this is one of those tasks that uh, I wanted to do a project on. So not uh, wedding thank yous for my wedding. It was actually my sister that got married last April. That's her and my brother-in-law, Adam. They're so cute. So I had to put one of their wedding photos uh, in this presentation. And so, you know, weddings, it's this very exciting time. Uh, they had like a, a pretty good sized wedding. Uh, and while the, the day was this awesome, magical day, then comes the dreaded task of sending these wedding thank you notes, uh, which, you know, I was hearing from her, oh my gosh, I have to write all these notes. Uh, and it is considered this, this pretty time intensive task. And in some ways, it is a really good task to automate, uh, especially <laughs> with how my sister was thinking about going about it. Uh, they had already uh, planned to send their thank you notes over email uh, through a digital thank you note, uh, so it would be more environmentally friendly and cost effective. Uh, and my sister is a very organized person, so she already had a spreadsheet with all of the information, everyone's names, and keeping track of the, the gifts and everything like that. So, you know, I was on the phone with her, and she was telling me about this, and I thought, wow, you know, I have just been in this GW Coders meeting, I learned about this cool Google Apps script, uh, why don't you let me uh, take a stab at trying to automate part of this for you? And she said, sure, why not? Um, so yeah, as I mentioned before, Google Apps Script, you are able to write code to automate tasks. And uh, for this specific example, we'll be talking about Google Docs and Google Sheets. Uh, also through GW Coders, uh, and Ryan has presented on this in the past, so you can go check out the YouTube archives of how to automatically update a Google Calendar. So I have also implemented that um, for kind of some work that I do within my department. But uh, that's also a very useful uh, use of Google Apps, and I definitely recommend that other people do that if you have a large calendar that you're having to manage and update. So for this specific project, uh, the data collection, all the information was stored in a Google Sheet. My sister originally had it in a Microsoft Excel file, but thankfully it's super easy to just upload an Excel file and convert it to a Google Sheet. So I just did that off the bat. And then in the Google Doc, that is where you're going to create this template for your thank you note or whatever kind of type of document you are trying to uh, customize in an automated way. Then you'll go ahead and write the code in Google Apps Script. And by write, I really mean Google for an example or template code, which is how I started out uh, with this project and then make tweaks uh, to suit your specific need. And then that code is going to be what generates these custom PDFs or documents. You can do it for either or both. And then something that you could also do, but that I didn't implement, um, is that you could probably uh, automate attaching that specific document to an email and automatically sending that through Gmail. Uh, so that would also kind of automate another element of your workflow if that was something that you wanted to do as well. So 
first step, you're collecting things in a Google Sheet. Uh, I will give my sister credit and say that she did not automate uh, writing all of the thank you notes. She did put uh, a lot of thought and heart into writing all that. Um, if you are trying to figure out how to write, write your wedding thank you notes, I found a wiki, wiki how article. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe you could uh, find some way to query ChatGPT and have ChatGPT write your th wedding thank you notes. Uh, but otherwise, you know, you can't get around that task uh, completely. So uh, to create the thank you note template, uh, I kind of just found a little bit of a, a nice design, uh, this little like pretty thank you note element, and then you'll have the text. So you can change that font just like you would with any kind of Google Doc. So just finding a nice font. And then the fields that you're going to automatically update using the code and have this kind of customized feature you'll surround those elements with the, the double hashtags. Um, this is very similar if you've ever used a Microsoft mail merge. You uh, use this same kind of uh, approach where you have these specific fields that are going to be updated based on your spreadsheet. So I just, as an example, said, you know, first name, last name, gift if you really wanted to have it be a very boilerplate thank you note you could do something like this um or you know in the case of my my sister's wedding notes she already had everything in a specific cell just called note and so i just ended up having one field within the document that just said note that pulled in the whole like note that said dear so and so blah 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 like love Tomorrow, you know, and Adam. So uh, you'll have that template. And then within the document, and I'll go through and I'll show this actually. Um, you know, we can do a live demonstration. Uh, so I'm just kind of stepping us through all the different steps, but you'll find the apps script within the tab extensions on the Google Doc. Uh, and if it's not on there already, then you can probably search for it using add-ons. I already had it installed, but that's where you will find it. And then in terms of finding template code, I have uh, here the, the URL for the specific code that I followed. But on uh, if you just Google, <laughs> if you search for it, uh, there are a lot of different template codes for doing a lot of these different types of tasks. So I was working off of one that was generate and send PDFs from Google Sheets. Uh, and it kind of steps you through the process. The example here was used to automatically generate invoices. So I had to adjust that a little bit, but it was pretty similar. And I will also say uh, I do not have any coding background in JavaScript. I know a little bit of R and Python. And so because this is basically in JavaScript, um, you know, I was a little intimidated at first, but it's actually pretty easy to follow if you have just kind of some background in coding. And then it just, uh, you know, you're kind of able to see the structure a little bit and uh, through trial and error, error uh, figure it out. So now I will kind of show you these different pieces. Uh, and so, and these are, are linked as well. So maybe I can put uh, the link to this presentation in the uh, the YouTube with the YouTube video once we upload that. Uh, and then you can look at all the different parts. So you have a Google Drive folder and you have a an example spreadsheets. I just put us uh, in here. <laughs> so, um, you know, some gifts of knowledge, insights, examples. Um, okay, and I'm going to clear this out. And then here is the template. I, I just kept in these specific fields and the note fields. So, if I didn't have this open already, you just go once again to extensions apps script. 
uh, and I'm going to see maybe um, it's pretty large, but yeah. we can shift PST. it. PST. Who's in Pacific? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we're right here. <laughs> I might have also just like kept <laughs> it out from the example code. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and I, I just kept, I didn't really even change the function names from this uh, sample code. So uh, it starts out by taking the date uh, and then uh, using it to, to, you know, label the, the folders. So within your kind of main Google Drive folder, it ends up creating a subfolder with all of the PDF documents and all of the Google Doc documents, and it labels it with the date. So if you did this over multiple dates, then you could keep it specific to the dates. I'm sure that's more useful for invoicing uh, than it was here. Uh, so you'll put in the ID for the specific Google Drive folder that you initially created. And you can find that within the URL. So once you create that Google Drive folder, you can just go and pull it directly from the URL and change that out within your code. Uh, so this is where, yeah, it's creating these subfolders that it labels like doc and PDFs. Then you'll also have your spreadsheet, your Google Sheet that you will have created. And once again, you can find that within the URL. You don't want all this edit things. Uh, you just kind of want the ID. Uh, and then if you had multiple sheets, then you have to specify the sheet. Um, once again, there was there's only one sheet in this one, but if you were had to pull from multiple sheets, then you could have that as a line in your code. You get a specific range. I had it from when I had a lot more information, but you would just pull in that specific range of cells. And then they have some kind of like starting conditions. Um, once again, from the invoice example, you want to have it be, oh, is it a new customer that you don't already have an invoice for? So then it has a loop. So basically, the way it's working is it's just looping through the different lines on your spreadsheet. Uh, and then it starts out by checking, you know, is this a new person? Uh, so there's some code that uh, is trying to avoid creating something for just your first line. That's just these labels. Um, so some of that is just a feature of like how the code is written. Uh, and I'm sure maybe, yeah, there's a more efficient way to write this code, but this was how they did it in the example. So that's how I kept it. Uh, and then if it's you know a new person and they haven't been done before, then it's gonna pull in the uh, the information from all of these different columns in your spreadsheet. And then the do merge function is what is creating these different uh, documents and, and generating the new customized documents and PDFs. So this, once again, is where you're going to have the ID for the third piece, which is that, that Google Doc. Once again, you can pull it from the URL. Uh, and then it'll create a new document. It'll label it saying letter and of this person. Uh, so that's nice because then you'll have all your different documents labeled. In this part is where it's going in and it's actually replacing it with uh, like those fields with the fields from your spreadsheet. You could have chosen anything. Instead of double hashes, you could have done like double brackets or something. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that format is probably just a carryover from like yeah. mail merge and yeah. kind of other features or other tools that use that. Um, I'm seeing if there's anything else really interesting in the code. That's pretty much it, yeah. And then it kind of just 
Yeah. So it, it basically is looping through and doing this. So uh, I can show you how you can just go ahead and run it. I know I did check it this morning, but I'm not, I wouldn't put it past. Uh, uh, it is kind of slow. So I don't know if there's a way to speed it up, maybe in a different language or yeah, if it's the fact that you're having to generate a PDF. Um, it's just, so R sends out 600 emails for the announcement about yeah. this, and it takes about 25 seconds to watch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they send out. Um, now, the one thing to note with email with the free GW account, you can only send 50 mm -hmm. in a block um, in like 200 a day or something. I have to be spread out by a certain amount of time. But through your GW account, since it's an organizational account, you have no limits. So you can send out. Oh, GW coders. Yeah. yeah, so yeah I yeah. send it through my GW email because it sends all 600 yeah. right then. Um, if you're using a free account, then you have to get creative because they're trying to stop spammers. Yeah. You can That's probably see them speed so, up to I'm, I'm running into that problem as an email CR when I hit. Yeah. It just slows down after I sent you me. Let's see if it has anything in here. It so might just be. Yeah. yeah so it has it. It's still, yeah. So I guess there's an error because it is producing it for the first line, but you can see. Uh, thank you so much for the insights yeah. on our special day. Just note one. Just note one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so i mean i guess that's kind of a, yeah what i'll i'll say um like i my my coding vibe has very much been what's the quick and dirty way to get something done and i really uh mostly just wanted to play around with google app script um and so uh, i thought this would be kind of a, a fun reason to do this um but there are definitely some ways to improve it. Um, so one thing, you know, one reason I didn't automatically link it to email is because I wanted my sister to be able to go in and check that I hadn't messed anything up before she sent out these uh, these invites. Also, I wasn't quite sure how it would work with her trying to send it through her Gmail account where with like everything, you know, because I, I did all the coding and stuff through my Google account. So I'm not quite sure how difficult or easy that might be. So that's something to consider. Um, also, yeah, with the 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 way that I created the template, um, once again, very quick and dirty. Um, these are just images. Yeah. And so if you had like a really long note for some, then it could be pushed to another page. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are better ways to do this. Uh, maybe if you had it, like, yeah, some automatic resizing. Um, if other people know about ways to do that, uh, let me know. That would be, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure other people have solutions to this, but I didn't really spend the time to find them. Uh, but it was a fun little project. And so uh, I hope that this just, uh, you know, gave you a little bit of insight into something else that you could use these tools for. So if you go back to the code, um, those kids are loose. I think sometimes, at least the first time I look at JavaScript loops or like Python loops are so easy mm -hmm. um, for X and Y, mm -hmm. but JavaScript uses a three component loop. So you define your variable. So you have your four and then you're doing a loop within that. And so you have your variable in its initial setting, your i equals zero. You can make the i anything. You can make it a word. You can make it any letter. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're doing i for less than the values in the length of the sheet. So you only want to have it loop through until it runs out of content to loop through, which is the length of mm -hmm. the sheet. So that's what the sheet values dot link. So if it's, if you have 75 lines and it will go to 75 and then stop. And then the I plus plus is just saying each time add one. Um, but the 
If you're not familiar with it, that's kind of how all loops in JavaScript always work, um, those three values. And then underneath where you have then the values, so in the brackets, now this is like Python and like mm -hmm. R, where okay. you have in the brackets, the I, which would be like the first iteration, the second iteration, and then which column out of I you're pulling the zero column, the first column, the first column, the one mm -hmm. is the two. Yeah. It has that. It has the zero thing. Like zero. One. So you always start at zero. And then the note was the F. So that would be the fifth, which mm -hmm. is, looks like the sixth, but it's the fifth mm -hmm. because of the zero. So that's what those were referring to. So for those who are less familiar with JavaScript, it might have looked much more challenging than it really was. Um, to go through that. I bet there's probably, well, so this is the weird thing. Like, it's not reading in the sheet as a data frame structure. So you're just doing it as like a list structure, right? And that's the double brackets there. Yeah. As opposed to if it was like Python or R, you could say make this a pandas data frame and you could call the column by name instead of index or same thing for R. Like, yeah. Like if you this, had a bigger, <clears throat> if you were actually doing this is only yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But if you were doing 10,000, mm. you had many, you had 10 yeah. different things you were putting into your customized form. Yeah. Then you're right. Moving it to a data frame would make it faster yeah. and easier to figure out what yeah. you're doing. I feel like this is like a very fundamental idea that is so confusing. It still confuses me. Like whether you're working with just a nested list which is kind of what this is or a data frame and they're like mm -hmm. the same thing they are the same thing as far as language is concerned like for r a data frame is a list but you see it differently so the user gets to i was i was expecting like why didn't you say like instead of sheet number five you just use the header name like like the address or the name you can't do it because it's not a data frame it's you have to use yeah. the indexes so um but can you, data yeah, data can you establish data a data frame in JavaScript? JavaScript? Like, or could that, can you have do that? I mean, I don't, I don't think, you, not sure if you could do a data frame because JavaScript isn't really for data. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's, so there are more modern uses, I guess, of yeah. JavaScript where they are data frames and stuff. Um, because you can run your whole backend on JavaScript now, whereas you used to have to have a separate, like, SQL data um, yeah. I mean, if you just wanted to name your variables, you could name your variables, but that's a manual thing that should be automated. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, JavaScript, different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the right loops and using it, it looks fine. <laughs> it works. Yeah. It so works. I could do my, it works in browsers. I should do my, my follow up to this using Corto. The Corto, which, which it, it generates the PDF using LaTeX. Ultimately, but you could have the same idea where you're like, I read in the Google Sheet and all the raw data. I have it render a templated LaTeX or sort of Corto pub that generates a PDF and then mails it. So I, that'd be a fun follow up to this. So like, how do I do the same thing but in a different? Yeah, that would like be there's, great. I'm sure there's a Python way to generate LaTeX too. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but doing it straight from Google is nice. Like it's, it, I mean. So maybe I'll show a project that I did, not the one I was planning to. So I, that's how I do. I have when I set when I grade my stuff when I send.
they've ever looked at that. But I don't know if you could I mean, the, 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 G, the G script makes so much more sense. To, yeah. So if you're going to learn one thing to do this kind of thing, it's it's so well integrated, it's so well documented too. Like it's very easy to find examples. You know. Yeah. Oh, so. definitely. It's and they have really great support websites. Like yeah. Google has made great support websites. That's yeah. where I find a lot of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit stop before I forget my record for hours. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a cool. I still haven't 